Hey guys, it's Rainbow back with another video. Here to continue my WrestleMania review series. And I'm here to continue with WrestleMania 22, April 2nd, 2006. Gotta say, WrestleMania 22, awesome WrestleMania, awesome show, mainly due to uh, the uh, uh, variety. Of matches on the show, uh, and uh, yeah, two epic matches in my opinion. And you know, the show as a whole was just really fun to watch. I mean, there were some matches that were disappointing, at least to me personally. But yeah, but uh, so yeah, I look forward to reviewing the show. So let's get on with this review. WrestleMania Twenty Two opens with the World Tag Team Championship match. Uh, Big Show and Kane versus Carlito and Chris Masters in a nobody cares match. This is just the most careless tag match in the history of WrestleMania. You probably no one cares about this match. Big Show and Kane win the choke slam I think by Kane. Whatever. I don't care about this match honestly. That's just how I feel. But yeah. Then we have the next match. The Money in the Bank ladder match. Rob Van Dam versus Shelton Benjamin versus Ric Flair versus Finn Lay versus Matt Hardy versus Bobby Lashley. Huh. This match was alright. This is, to be honest, this is my least favorite Money in the Bank match ever. Just, I don't know, just not much here. It's just, it's like a match that I just don't care to watch, like, ever. Yeah, I'm calling this my least favorite Money in the Bank ever. I just don't like it that much, guys. It just... It just disappointed me. I, yeah, Shelton doing that. This all Shelton stuff was pretty cool. And, uh... Yeah, that and Ric Flair getting the suplex from the top of the ladder. Those were the only two worthy spots of mentioning, honestly, in my opinion. But, I, I just didn't like this Man in the Bank match that much at all. Yeah, like I said, the weakest Man in the Bank. Uh, in my opinion, of course. Really. Yeah. yeah. Then we have the next match. The WWE United States Championship match. Chris Benoit defending against JBL. This match was actually going really good. It could have been a solid match if it was given like maybe double the time and maybe this match will be talked about more. Uh, the reason why people probably didn't talk about it is because JBL won. They thought it thought it was stupid, I don't blame them, but as you guys know, I don't like JBL at all. I think he's boring as hell, honestly, he's sloppy. I just don't like JBL guys. And yeah, Chris Benoit, he was really cool in this match. He did German suplexes, that was really cool. Diving hit butt even, but JBL rolled Benoit up, holding on to the rope while as he pinned him. One, two, three, the New Year's Champion, JBL. Sorry guys, I'm really tired if you can't tell. It's 3 a.m. over here. Just, I wanted to get these reviews done. Done and done. Then I'm off to sleep. Then we have the next match, and the second best match of the night in my opinion. That is the hardcore match, Edge vs. McFoley. This match was awesome. So much fun. Definitely a dang good worthy WrestleMania match. This this match was just awesome. Uh, they used barbed wires in this match. Tex. Uh, this match was only 14 minutes, but it was still awesome. Just going uh, really cool. Uh, they, it was like... There was like a little square box around the outside of the ring. They didn't really go anywhere. Like it was like they were just sticking to the the apron near the apron if they went outside the ring. I, I don't know if you guys know what I mean, but yeah, it was cool. And that part when Edge was like uh, tied between the ropes, that was pretty. <laughs> Awesome, yeah, yeah. Mick Foley with the barbed wire two by four, I think, or bat, whatever. He was like, Haha, I'm gonna get you, but leader, of course, being Edge's uh, kayfabe manager, K 
came in to stop it. Uh, even Lita got hurt here. But yeah, just excellent match. I, I can't praise it enough. The ending, yeah, yeah, let's get on with the ending. Uh, 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 how did it end? Uh, oh yeah, the leader sets the sets the table on fire. Then uh, uh, Mick Foley uh, gets the spear through the ring ropes into the flaming table. So that was pretty awesome ending. Many people love this ending, but yeah, just awesome. And uh, and uh, what else? Yeah, Edge pin one two three. Edge was bleeding. Edge was Edge was bleeding, and he was like in shock afterwards. So he had to be taken back. So yeah, but whatever. Just. Oh my god, I should have filmed this earlier. Uh, Alright, then we have the next match. The Boogeyman versus Booker T and Shamel. Th this match was... It was it was just... Yeah, it was just... Not, it wasn't a real match. I will say one thing though. The Boogeyman's entrance was awesome. That was a beautiful, amazing entrance. I love the Boogeyman's entrance at WrestleMania. I, don't, I just... That's how he always comes out. That's how his entrance has always been. But just seeing that entrance at WrestleMania was just awesome, and it makes me anticipate Finn Balor's uh, WrestleMania debut eventually. Not now, but eventually. So yeah, yeah. Just this match was just nothing really. And Booker T. Booker T was. Um, like pretty much out of the match and for a bit and then Boogeyman put the worms in his mouth uh, kick, kissed Shamel then he gets the win on Booker T so yeah then we have the next match the WWE Women's Championship match Trish Stratus defending against Mickey James this match was excellent for a women's match uh, Mickey James was excellent was acting kind of skanky throughout the match, though. Uh, something that WWE wants us to forget about, honestly. But this was still an excellent for one of the match. If it was given longer time, uh, you know, I actually think this match is. Uh, I did say in my WrestleMania 19 review with uh, my my friend uh, WWE Fan Five Nine. Uh, I thought that the triple threat match at WrestleMania 19 between the Divas was the best uh, Divas WrestleMania match of all time. Um, I think this. I think this one's slightly better. Tristress making change from twenty-two. I don't know. They're they're both equally good. Really, just uh, this match was just really good. Some good storytelling elements and just. Oh my God. Just. Uh, yeah, Mickey James got the win, so. Yeah. Then we have the next match. The, the casket match. Undertaker vs. Mark Henry. They're pretty disappointing. I actually think Mark Henry and Undertaker could, it, could it has potential to be a really good match, but. I don't know. They're just. It's just there wasn't a spark here. It was just. Yeah, I mean they did. Yeah, it's really hard to remember this match. They, did, they didn't even do much. It was just uh, uh, Mark Henry getting beaten up for quite a bit, and Undertaker lands the tombstone, puts Mark Henry in the casket. Undertaker is uh, fourteen and over here, so of course Undertaker wins. So yeah, uh, yeah. Then we have the next match and the long, no, the second longest match of the night. Uh, no holds barred match. Shawn Michaels versus Vince McMahon. This match was a lot of fun. No, it's not a great match or anything, uh, but yeah, like Shane getting himself uh, to kiss Vince's asshole. So that was pretty funny. And yet some good weapon spots, and of course Shawn Michaels doing the the 
the uh, diving elbow onto Vince who was on the table with the trash can, so that was cool. And Shane was uh, handcuffed on the outside of the ring, so yeah. So yeah. Uh, so and, and Shawn Michaels gets the win. So yeah. Uh, then we have the next match, uh, triple threat match for the World Heavyweight Championship. Kurt Angle versus Randy Orton versus Rey Mysterio. Uh, I wish this match was longer, guys. This match was so much fun. Uh, they were just doing everything here. If this match got, this match would have got doubled. If this this match should have been twenty five minutes, guys. If this match was twenty five minutes, this match would have stolen the show without a doubt. This match would have been five stars easily. Just. This match was awesome. I'm just really bummed out that it was so short. Just why, man? God, just Kurt Angle fought Randy Orton one on one for quite a bit before uh, Rey Mysterio got back in, uh, and, and yeah, Rey Mysterio gets the win, uh, winning for his his best friend Eddie Guerrero, who passed away uh, the previous November, of course. Got God rest his soul. Just all right. Then we have the the Playboy pillow fight. Uh, Tory Wilson versus Ken Michelle. Like, I, I can't rate this match, guys. Just it, it wasn't really a match. Just but uh, it it was hot though, of course. But yeah, I can't really grade this match. I, I nothing much to talk about really. So Tory Wilson wins, whatever. But yeah. Then we have the main event, the, uh, the the WWE Championship match, John Cena defending against Triple H. Now this match was awesome, uh, the, the match of the night in my opinion, uh, John Cena and Triple H were just, uh, this match was really good because of the crowd, even though I'm I, I, not the biggest fan of crowds when they bash John Cena, but here I, I just thought it, I, I don't think I'd love this match as much if it wasn't for like the crowd's reaction to like the near falls near the end that was pretty awesome uh, and yeah this was just an excellent match they were doing a couple good moves on each other Triple H not bad John Cena awesome of course and then, uh, then John Cena gets the STF on uh, Triple H at the end of course Triple H taps out to the to the STF view and the crowds in the audience butt hurt that Cena won. Screw them, alright? Screw them. Cena won. He deserves to win. Deal with it. Alright? So, yeah. Uh, anyway, that was my review of Respect 22, guys. I want to have a lie down now. And, yeah, then I'll do WrestleMania 23. Hopefully, I'll be. I will have rested by then. So, yeah. So, thanks for watching, guys. Like, comment, subscribe. I'll see you next time. Peace out.